beautiful people. Pregnancy is 40 weeks. Sometimes it may go over for a week or so. But for 41 weeks, we were treated to Meghan Markle's a moon bump show on full display. We were told to accept what our eyes were telling us was a lie. This is why her pregnancy never felt right. Because they wanted us to accept physical impossibilities. This is the typical, when you have a belly, and her belly of this lady here is not, in the, the belly of the lady here is not as big as Meghan Markle's. It's not that you have a difficult time squatting or anything like that. It's just that you have a bump in front of you. And therefore, you need to open your legs to make space for that bump. This is what, what, what we were talking and we were saying something does not sit well with this woman. How she would sit on her own all the way to the ground without needing any help to get up. And it has nothing to do with being helpless or, you know, not physically fit. It's just that you need help because we saw her in other events with Harry, how he would need to help her sit on a chair. But here she can squat back up and down with her legs closed, no problems. So there were many, many things that were not right. Never mind the exhibitionism that she <laughs> made us um, witness. You know, Meghan Markle would have benefited from like 300 years ago when women were literally locked, pre royal pregnant women were literally locked in a room to ensure that they didn't, you know, get into any accidents, they were not exposed to any illnesses, and most importantly, they were not seen in public, and they would not lie about their pregnancy because Meghan Markle flaunted it so publicly, this fake belly, this fake way of carrying her pregnancy that she should, she would have benefited of, as, as I said, being 300 years ago, being pregnant. Because there's a reason, guys, why people, people were not being mean to her. People were literally happy, even when she distastefully announced during uh, Eugenie's uh, wedding that she was pregnant. I mean, talk about stealing somebody's thunder. <laughs> so yes, but it's, it's the way gone about it because she is not a consistent actress she's a bad actress so she can't consistently you know she can't fake being a mom she can't fake being pregnant properly because she you see Meghan Markle can only grift in very short periods of time she can't consistently hold a long grift which is what's happened there you know, she's not consistent. She doesn't, you know, like, and this is an actress, somebody who should understand about continuity in a movie, you know, like, for example, if you make a movie, then they don't allow you to cut your hair in case you need to come and do the scene again. Something like that. This is a woman who clearly doesn't know anything about that. But yeah, the royal family told us, you must believe that this is the case of what's going on. Now, I am not going to play you any moon bumps <laughs> or anything like that, guys. I'm not going to do that because I'm, you know, God knows if you want to watch that, go to Megan Small's channel because she has excellent, excellent videos about that. In fact, she is, she holds a PhD, and let me see if I say the word right, in moon, moon bumpology, moon bumpology, because she is amazing at it. So yeah, please go watch and subscribe to Megan Small because to that, she, she does excellent jobs of that. And no, I know that this topic is suddenly going or doing the rounds in other YouTube channels saying, oh, it's the first time we've heard of it. No, my channel and Yankee Wally's and Megan Small bookworm, we've been talking about it for two and a half years as in showing you receipts, actual receipts, like actual receipts that I'm gonna show you here very shortly. So yeah, I'm not gonna talk about mobology, but I'm gonna talk to you about the palace and the crisis talks that they're having with the Sussexes at the moment, because there's just too much coming out. There is just too much coming out. It was so badly done that they are now, there, there is gonna to come to a point that they have to act and, Harry and Meghan are freaking out because the palace is not going to take the fall for them. 
because the monarchy must always win. The monarchy must always win, guys. So why am I talking about this? This is the crux of the entire situation that we're going to be discussing, guys. This, please focus on this. This is the entire crux of the modern day fraud that we're watching being committed against the UK and the Commonwealth by Harry and Meghan Markle backed by the monarchy, British monarchy, because there is absolutely no way on earth that the monarchy, that the royal family were not aware of this and didn't put a stop to this. Okay, but we're going to start with this right now because everybody's focusing on Harry and Meghan Markle. And many of you write to me and say, Paula, how can these people get away with that? They get away with that because nobody's calling them out. So we're going to start with this right now. You all know that there's some Royal Marriages Act. Okay, and this is literally what it says. Royal Marriages heirs of the body. A marriage is a royal marriage for the purposes of establishing the claim of any person to succeed to the crown as heir to the body if that marriage is a marriage between a man and a woman. A person is disqualified from succeeding to the crown as an heir to the body of a royal marriage if they're not of the if they're not the offspring of both parties to that marriage. This is this is the Royal Marriages Act when it was being proposed, the sex, same marriage, and it passed. But there were a lot of things because when they passed the same sex marriages, I amended that, this Royal, uh, the, the Marriages Act, it had an impact on the Royal Marriages Act. Because as you can clearly see here, it says that it has to be an heir of the heirs of the body. So if Megan has used a surrogate, she's not an heir of the body, even if they used the eggs and uh, we're going to get into this. This was a bill. This was the reasoning they put forth back before in order when they were amending the, the Marriages Act to include same sex sex. They were thinking, listen, this is going to have an impact on the Royal Marriages Act. So this is an amendment was on March that was on the Marshall list in committee. I can be brief. Because I said all the detailed points then. However, I repeat that I do not make these points in relation to the marriage same-sex couples bill and would deplore any attempt to obstruct that bill by invocation of any issue involving the crown. So he wanted to specify that what he was pointing out was not to hinder the approval because it was pending the approval of the same-sex marriages act. But this Lord wanted to emphasize that by passing that bill, amending the Mar Marriages Act bill, it would have an impact on the royal marriages, okay? And here we go. My concern arises from the security of the 17th century term. Yes, this is how long back it goes. Heir of the body. The governing definition for the right to succession as it might be constructively tested in the courts in modern conditions. Namely, the emergent legislation for same-sex marriage and the techniques of surrogate childbirth. Because right now in England, um, the mother of the child is the surrogate. They, even if you have a contract, this is not like in the United States. And if the mother, by law, decides not to give up the child, even if you have the sperm of the, of the, of the donor, the donor sperm and their mother's, you know, all, uh, over whatever, it doesn't matter. The mother is still the woman who carries the child because the child comes off the body. So um, of the same-sex marriage and the techniques of surrogate childbirth. On the first, it will clearly be lawful for a monarch or an existing heir of the body to enter into a same-sex marriage when they, that act becomes law. Because of course, once it passes, that means that a monarch can be gay and you know he can use a surrogate clearly he will need to use a surrogate <laughs> to have a baby right after all one hesitates to imagine the circumstances in which either clause of this bill were to use were used to frustrate an intended same sex marriage a novel interference with rights as others have pointed out thereby denying that person's succession to the throne, or indeed where there was no intervention and the marriage was accepted in some of their realms and not others. I will leave all the links in the video description so you can go um, look at it, okay? I'll just go here, um, I'll just go here and I'll go to the point uh, where it's very specific to Harry and Meghan Markle, okay? 
I'm just going to look at here. So you, you, please feel free to pause and read a little bit, right? But but it's good to hear. In committee and in a most courteous letter to me, my noble and learned friend, Lord Wallace, whom I thank for his handling of the bill, which has been outstanding, said, only a natural born child of a husband and wife can succeed to the throne, okay? If that is so, and it has always been understood to be the position, this is in regards to royal, for the purpose of succession. Please understand this. We're not talking about the, the same-sex marriage for regular people. This is in regards to royal marriages and the line of succession, right? Because as it stands to this day, this is law for royal marriages and the succession act. Um, it says here, um, if that is so, it has always it has always been understood to be the position. Those words would also exclude any claim to becoming a monarch made in the future by a child born, born of a queen, an heir of the body of a queen who was not engendered by the sperm of a consort, even though that would be heir might have been from an egg of the queen carried by the queen and born of the body of the queen in a lawful same-sex marriage. We all agree that that is the common law. I simply ask whether the common law is proof against any claim to a right that might be entertained in future, either in the European Court of Human Rights or anywhere else. It need not arise directly in the case of an existing heir, but in a less proximate person who then, by accident, became the heir to the throne. This is very important because Harry's fifth in line to the throne, beautiful people. And Meghan Markle has said that she is only a plane crash away from becoming Queen, Queen of England. So we go here. They, they, they go here into very little specifics and he goes that. He further argues... However, by citing to me that the Human Fertilization and Embryology Act of 2005, that an heir of a queen's body alone could not succeed. Okay, so you're starting to see how serious this whole surrogate thing, the implications that it would have if the monarchy has gone along with Harry and Meghan Markle's greatest modern fraud of, you know, the century. So I raised this in a committee and referred it and referred to it as being potentially less than conclusive as a defense of the definition of heirs of the body, given the nature of the drafting of the statue. The relevant section refers to any dignity, is right here, any dignity, title, or title, or of honor. The words of honor were left out in my noble friend's letter Although I think they are as significant as by my interpretation, honor is surely something that flows from the crown. Okay, so it, it goes on to say, my noble and learned friend also argues that a lesser dignity must surely encompass a greater dignity. Again, I am not qualified to answer that question, but clearly removal of any doubt as to whether the crown is encompassed in that 2005 act would simply solve the matter. It would debar an heir of the queen's body who was not the genetic heir of the monarch and his or her consort in whatever form of marriage. Are we understanding what they're saying? That's that if not, if either party, it's not the natural parent of the child that the surrogate is carrying, even if it has a part of it, let's say, because I've heard some people say, well, it's hairy sperm and that, that, that for his royal. But as you can read here, the act actually nothing it has to be from both and it has to be born of the of the of the woman's body so um, i'm gonna i'm gonna just i i don't know if i'm making myself a little bit clearer because um okay um it may be that these occasions seem remote but as history shows no nothing is ever certain in committee i raise the est case a challenge for legitimacy by the son of Queen Victoria's uncle, the Duke of Sussex. So as we can see, the Duke of Sussex has, I mean, it, this is, I mean, 
as an example of what would be royal heir, having recourse to the law. Although my noble friend argued that he did not appeal to the courts, he did appeal to your lordship's committee for privileges, which was and still is the appropriate place for the test of peerage. So it is very, very imp important for you guys. My noble and learned friend in his letter says that Sir Augustus did not challenge the legitimacy of the Royal Marriages Act. That is technically correct. But he was arguing that his parents' marriage and therefore his right to succession was valid on other grounds in that the Royal Marriages Act did not apply. It would be a parallel case for a future claimant to go to the courts here or abroad to argue that the Human Fertilization and Embryology Act did not rule out his or her legitimate claim. This, guys, this is incredibly important because I can see Harry and Meghan Markle taking the United Kingdom to courts, the international courts, in case we find out that they used a surrogate in order to ensure that those children remain in the line of succession and hold titles. Okay? And, and the reason why I'm bringing this up, and please keep in mind when we talk about it, we're not talking about the, the, the Marriages Act, the same sex caps. They're just talking about because it's an embryology act that does not uh, that does not apply to the royal family. Because the royal family, because of purpose of any dignities, titles, and honors, cannot the heirs have to be basically the sperm and the egg have to be from both, and the, they have to the woman has to bear the child and has to give birth to the child, which is why I said this is why they have to present. Catherine, all the royal ladies had to present the easel with the signatures of the doctors testifying that they delivered that child and they were, they, they were witness to that event. Before it was law up to 1948, when before Charles was born, but it was the law, it was written law, but it was abolished in exchange because, you know, they say, you know what, you don't need the home secretary, you don't need the two assistants, you have the doctors, the doctors will testify that, you know, that they delivered those children and it's going to be made public, correct? So this is where we are right now with, with what we're seeing at the moment. So now we've seen it happen all, all the time that all the royal ladies, they present, even the queen, everybody has presented or the doctor's signature has to be there because the Royal Marriages Act is very strict. And I just read you that. And please, please understand that that, is the crux of the entire situation. That is the crux of the entire um, problem that Harry and Meghan Markle has, and the monarchy are, is now facing. Okay, because they know, they know that even if Harry provided the sperm and Meghan provided the egg, that the law in the United Kingdom it's very clear when it comes to Royal Marriages Act and the line of succession. Now. There, they can try to amend it. And as they said, there's already the Duke of Sussex, a previous Duke of Sussex, took to the courts to sue and say, hey, wait a minute, you know, the, the Royal Marriages Act does not apply to me. So now they're worried that the 2005 Embryology Act might be used to challenge the Royal Marriages Act. Now, the problem here is not whether or not Rachel Meghan Markle used a surrogate. The problem is that she hid it and lied about it, allegedly. Okay, that's, please keep that in mind. Nobody's saying you can't use a surrogate or anything like that. But for the Royal Marriages Act, if Mergan did use a surrogate and did not notify anybody, let's pretend that she didn't tell anybody that the royal family really did not know anything about it then she has committed, for her and Harry have committed fraud because no matter how stupid Harry is, he still has to see the woman naked. Although Meghan did say that Harry never went with her to the doctor's appointments, pregnancy doctor's appointments, the regular checkups. Isn't that weird huh? for Harry to be such a modern father? <laughs> now, talking about physical impossibilities, we can all agree that Princess Catherine is incredibly athletic. This is them getting out of, uh, I, I believe it was Anzac, or, or I think it was one of the Remembrance um, Commonwealth thing. There was the Commonwealth uh, 
service. And they were coming out. Meghan Markle is there. She was wearing that god awful white coat. But I'm going to show you this because this is very interesting. Let, we all know that Princess Catherine is incredibly athletic. I mean, she's about six to seven months, six, seven months pregnant here. Um, she's incredibly athletic. You can see, you're going to be able, once I start playing the video, seeing her ankles are already a little bit swollen because it is normal to, to, you, to retain water as you get more and more pregnant, right? And she tries to receive flowers and you know that she likes to scoot down to the level of the children, right? Watch and see this. She can't go all the way down. So she keeps, she ha, she does try to go all the way down. Here, see. You see, she can't go all the way down. There. She tries to go, as I, I keep repeating myself, you can see she stays half all the way. Had it been Megan, she would have scooted all the way down. And Princess Catherine there is about six months pregnant. But you can see she's trying to do her best to keep at the same eye level of the children. But, you know, she just can't do it because, of course, she is pregnant and she would need to spread her legs wide open to make room for the for the for the baby. Otherwise, she'd fall backwards or, you know, front. You can see that it's impossible for her. And she's an incredibly athletic lady. You can see her, her legs are starting to get a little bit of water retention. So why, why do I say these things, guys? Because it's important. These things are important. Catherine, because people are trying to compare Megan to that Megan is a superwoman. She's not a superwoman. She's a super idiot. But you can clearly see a six, about six month pregnant Princess Catherine struggling to bend down to meet the same eye level of the little kid. Okay, so now we're going to get into the juicy stuff, guys. I hope you're ready for this because the receipts are going to start coming. And I'm not talking about the moon bumps. We're going to start talking because we cannot forget that Rachel and Harry were the ones who briefed Carolyn Durand and Omid Scoby. That has been proven be, beyond a, a doubt in the UK courts when Jason Kanoff presented some of the emails, be, the exchange between Meghan, Harry, and himself where they are the ones leaking all this information to Carolyn Duran and Omid Scobie, right? So let's get ready for the receipts, guys, okay? This is what they say in the book. They continue, Harry and Meghan, who were never spotted entering or leaving Portland, didn't tell anyone about their hospital choice, not even their closest aides or friends. The only people who did know were Doria and Meghan's medical team including her OB, her OBGYN, Penelope Law. It's very important for you to remember that. Now, why is that important? Because first of all, the Royal Police Protection Officers would have been bound by law to notify the palace and their head security uh, boss that they're on their way to the Portland hospital so they can do a security sweep and secure the area for Harry and Meghan to come in. So that statement there is absolutely false. Now we know, and I'm going to read this, we know that because that they are implying that the Royal Police Protection Officers basically broke the, broke the law. They broke the law. They did not notify anybody. And how were how were they securing the hospital if they didn't tell anybody? That just doesn't happen. Okay. Meanwhile, Megan jokingly jokingly called herself a balloon to a friend as her due date of April 28 came and went by. So they want us to believe that this geriatric mother just stayed it for 41 weeks. Her engagement ring no longer fit. I didn't see, I saw her hands. We've all seen her hands. They were all skinny as long as, and also were her legs. Her engagement ring um, no longer fit. And Omid and Carolyn explained as her pregnancy went into the first week of May, she stuck with the modified yoga routine she had done every morning throughout. She also made long walks with her two dogs, part of the daily ritual up on moving to Frogmore. A source said that Megan took the advice of doctors who attended Frogmore Cottage every day in the days leading up to their hospital admission. Please don't forget the name Dr. Penelope Law. 
A friend told the authors the period she was overdue was the longest eight days of her life. They added, but her patience and calm were amazing during that time. She just said the baby will come when it comes. And that was that. On the evening of Sunday, May 5th, Prince Harry jumped behind the wheel of a Range Rover and drove Megan as well as Doria and a protection officer to the Portland. That is impossible because the police, I mean, the police protection officers, they had more than one would have needed to phone his head. I just explained this, his, his boss and tell him we're on our way to the hospital. We need a team securing the hospital and Buckingham Palace would have been notified and then they wouldn't have mixed up the time. Right. And now, because in Harry's own words and spare, he said that they hired vans with blacked out windows, like two or three, and they got out that way, along with all the security um, personnel or Royal Police Protection Officers. So which one is it? According to the authors, Megan did not deliver by C-section. At 5.26 a.m. on Monday, May 7th, Archie was born in an uncomplicated birth. But we've seen that Harry said that it was actually a little bit complicated because they made her bounce up and down a ball. They made her... They had to give her an epidural and then she was put in a bathtub and, you know, and uh, miraculously they sent her back within an hour. It was the authors wrote, right. It was soon after Archie was born, but Dr. Penny, Penelope Law had given the all clear and Megan felt up to getting back home where she could continue to be monitored. Although Megan spent just a short time in the hospital after Archie's birth, when she texted friends with the news back home while the baby slept, she described being elated, if tired, and a little overwhelmed. Meanwhile, when it came to letting the public know, Harry wanted to do so himself. Okay? Omitting Carolyn detail, how a source close to the prince told them Harry didn't want his office to give the info to, of the papers, so he didn't want to lose it. He was the one. Let's not forget about it that Harry is the only living witness, aside from the doctors, um, who were there, who was there. And he's talking about this, right? Because we saw him talk about it on Spare. But they said that Meghan Markle, according to what Harry said on Spare, which is completely different than what is being said, that what they told Carolyn and Omid Scobie in Finding Freedom is completely different than this, okay? Because it's saying... Mm, um, that Harry, that Meghan Markle, that Dr. Penny, Penelope Law, is the one who delivered the child. Okay, that's what they're saying right now, that Dr. Penelope Law is the one who delivered the child. And as you can see here, Meghan Markle's royal baby was delivered by Britain's poshest doctor, the Countess of Bradford. We can exclusively reveal Dr. Penelope Law is married to the seventh Earl of Bradford and was once dubbed too posh to push, not pull, uh, too posh to pull, sorry. But she's also a top consultant obstetrician and gynecologist specializing in maternity. A member of the aristocracy herself, Dr. Penny, as she's known on her word, was the woman trusted to deliver Prince Harry's first child, Archie, on May 6th, a royal source told Fabulous Digital. This is when reality hits Meghan Markle and slaps her ass in the face. This is Richard Bradford, the Seven Earl. My wife did not deliver Archie, but the son never contacted us to check if she had. Typical shabby journalism. Whereas the Daily Mail rang me the day before to check and was able to, and I was able to tell them that she hadn't delivered Archie. And yet, the Daily Mail refused to run the story that Dr. Penelope Law what, had not delivered Archie. They kept quiet when they discovered all the fraud. This is when I tell you that the press has also been incredibly complicit. Um, Mr. Uh, the Earl, later on, I don't know if he still has the tweet, but this was a long time ago. I know it says one year ago, but it, this is a while ago. And I was tagged in that thing along with Yankee Wally. As you can say, my handle back then was Gatito 1968. So the receipts start to come out because Harry and Meghan have stated that they gave birth 
the Portland Hospital. Archie was delivered at the Portland Hospital by Dr. Penelope Law. Later on, when it was proven that Dr. Penelope Law was not even in the country, because the second tweet said that they were away on vacation, the both of them, Dr. Penelope Law and her husband, had been away on vacation all that time. And therefore, she couldn't have delivered Archie. So then Meghan Markle's uh, machine, they come out and say there's this other doctor who has um, um, a clinic of alternative childbirth and blah, 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 who was the one to deliver. But Portland Hospital has already stated that she doesn't have any privileges there. So she was never present at the hospital during that time, if there was any time. She couldn't have delivered Archie because she doesn't have any privileges at the Portland Hospital. Then we have Meghan Markle and Oprah saying that she didn't tell anybody because she didn't want all the press people blocking the entrance to the emergency room at the Portland Hospital. The Portland Hospital does not have an emergency room, okay? Period. They don't have an emergency room. Now, Bookworm and I have tried repeatedly, repeatedly to get even the baptism certificate for Archie, and it has been denied because it's considered to be, uh, I don't know what, private information, even though all of those documents must be public, uh, made available to the public in order to ensure that the children belong in the line of succession and the public is okay with that. This is what they want us to accept a way of proof that Harry and Meghan, that Meghan delivered the child, this easel announcement with no signatures. By the way, the palace, for the first time in modern history, got it wrong because they issued a statement around 9 a.m. in the morning saying that Meghan Markle had gone into labor in the early hours of that day, May 6th. Not that she had delivered the child at 526. And then they issued an apology. Do you guys remember that mix up with the emails? So nothing is straightforward. Nothing is transparent ever with this woman. Okay. And then we have this. This is a boy. That's it. That's all there is to it, guys. And this is the birth certificate, which was amended later on. Okay. Uh, where it says here uh, that her last name is Markle. Uh, His Royal Highness Henry Charles Al Albert David, Duke of Sussex, is the father because all the names have to appear there, okay? Um, and Rachel Megan of last name, maiden name, Markle, okay? And then she let her, uh, and of course, she had it changed to be Princess of the United Kingdom. And this is what they gave, the birth announcement. That's it. This is what the palace said. The Duchess of Sussex went into labor in the early hours of this morning when the baby, according to Harry and Meghan, stated that he had already been born at 5.26 a.m. Um, and then later on, they published almost immediately, Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Sussex, was safe, safely delivered of, of the baby at 5.26. And then, of course, the royal communication uh, that they have there and the easel without any signatures. Okay, that's it. That's all we have, given all this set of lies that they've shown us, because they've given us a whole set of lies. We've seen Meghan Markle's moon bump, her giving certain dates to the crowds and then not being true. We've seen that Harry, when he presented Archie two days after the birth, he said that, you know, it's amazing how much they change in two weeks. It's, it's all, I mean, it's, it's an insanity, guys, at its, at its worst. And here we have the three babies easels that the, the of Princess Catherine delivered. You know, you can see the signatures. Here is, um, I believe, this is George, Charlotte, and Louis. You can clearly see the doctor's signature and everything else. It's it's there's no mystery. Everything is transparent. Whereas with Meghan, everything is secret. Everything is secret. Here we have, for example, this is the late, this is the last child from Princess Catherine. This is Prince Louis, right? This is the announcement. Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Cambridge, was admitted to St. Mary's Hospital, Paddington, London, earlier this morning in the early stages of labor. Um, the, the, they give you all the information on the 23rd of April. They say Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Cambridge, was safely delivered of a son at 1101 hours. The baby weighs so much, blah, blah, blah. The Duke of Cambridge was present for the birth. Notes to editor, the medical staff in support were, and they give you the entire names of every of everybody was involved there, okay? 
And then you have here Her Royal Highness, all the people involved in the delivery delivery of the child. You can clearly see here the child, the signatures of the doctors that were delivering that. Okay. And here you have all. And then here they ask that instead of giving them money or gifts for the child to please donate to the Evelina London Children's Hospitals. Okay. As gifts from commercial organizations will not be accepted. They will be returned to the sender unless the cost of shipping is too prohibitive, in which case the commercial gifts will be donated to an appropriate charity. Okay. So are we seeing the difference here? Are we seeing the difference of what's going on at the moment and why we have a hard time believing anything they have to say? This is why the palace now has a hot potato in their hands. And they're asking Harry and Meghan Markle to help them clear out the doubts that the public have. And they're about to make, they're demanding, to, because to this day, Harry and Meghan Markle have refused to give palace the documents with the doctor's signature. I don't know if they know where, where Harry and the kids were born, but Harry and Meghan are still to this day refusing to hand over the palace and parliament. The doctors noticed, or the doctors, the document with the doctor's signature stating that the children, or that Archie at least, belongs in the line of succession. And he was born in the United Kingdom out of Meghan, Meghan's body. And let's not forget what I talked to you in the first early of, of this video. And who can forget my, my journey with trying to get Lily's um, birth certificate. This is the response I got from the, um, from the CHSI Vital Records of California. Greetings and thank you, for, uh, thank you for contacting the California Department of Public Health Office of Vital Records, right? That's what they tell me because I sent them an email and you guys know that because I've, I've shown you that email and I'm gonna read it to you right now. So you know that I'm not lying to you. It says, in response to your inquiry, unfortunately, we're not able to locate a certificate with the information provided. Therefore, a, a certificate of no public record, CNPR, was issued. If you believe this is an error, please return back the letter mailed to you and provide additional copies of documents or information. You may have to perform another search for you free of charge thankfully because i spent 43 dollars guys every time i tried to i've asked for a a copy uh, an informational copy of the birth certificate otherwise your next step is to apply uh, apply at the county recorder's office and the county where this event occurred if you still require help please contact you know they give you all that information and on top of that the doctor that ha is supposed to have delivered lily suddenly quit her firm her, she closed her practice and her husband owns a fertility clinic and a surrogate clinic where they come and they get in vitro and surrogate services as well isn't that odd and apparently according to megan small she has started already quietly back being a doctor but she immediately and suddenly quit her firm and like her clinic she didn't even give the two weeks notice to her patients so this is a topic, guys. I've been showing you these receipts. Megan's mole has been talking about the moon bumps. You know, she's the PhD in moon bumpology. But I've been trying to present you the receipts. Bookworm as well. Yankee Wally. Yankee Wally lost her channel to this. Okay? Because why, why is this happening? And now Palace is getting tougher because now it's the reputation of the monarchy on the line. And people are no longer willing to cover up for Harry and Rachel Meghan Markle, which must be a bitch if you think about it. 